Hello, welcome to Tim Talk. I'm Timothy Hunt, and I'm the Director for Personal Counseling here at Sand Hills Community College. Today, I want to talk with you about suicide and transactional analysis. The reason why we're talking about suicide is because September is the month for suicide prevention, and suicide is one of the leading causes of death in the United States. My job as a mental health therapist your mental health therapist for campus is to help prevent that. And so with the partnership that I've got with SGA and ECA, we decided that this would be a good opportunity to do Tim Talks to talk about these issues since we're all experiencing the worseness of COVID and we don't, we're not on campus. This is a great way to get information out via the web. So today I'm going to teach you about transactional analysis and the ego states, parent, adult, child, and how we look at transactional, I mean, how we look at suicide using transactional analysis. So, Dr. Eric Byrne was a very brilliant man, and he is the author and creator of this Cognitive Behavioral Theory, CBT. Cognitive Behavioral Theory is nothing more than when we're looking at the way we think, and from our thinking, it helps us with our feelings, and then that generates behavior. So CBT is, or transaction analysis, is a CBT. It is a Cognitive Behavioral Theory. And in this theory, Dr. Byrne believed that person's personality is made up of three ego states. This is what we call the classic snowman, P-A-C. Anytime you ever see three circles stacked on top of each other and these letters inside, you know that they're talking about transactional analysis. So Dr. Byrne was a psychiatrist. He trained in a Freudian training group when he got out of school. So he wanted to learn more about psychodynamic theory and as he was in that training group, he realized that there was more to therapy, helping people, than what Freud had originally discovered. So, you know, Dr. Freud introduced to us the ego, the id, and the superego. Well, Dr. Byrne believed that these were more than just these nebulous parts in the brain, that you could actually see someone being parental, you could actually see someone being adult-like, and you could actually witness someone being childlike. And so from his experiences, he began to create this theory. He had an IQ of higher than uh, 120, and he became famous in the 1960s when he wrote a book called Games People Play. And he was the Dr. Phil of that time. He went on the Johnny Carson show and shared his book, and here we go, here's the theory. So essentially, what Dr. Byrne taught was that in, in the three, so we've got the parent, the adult, and the child ego state, right? So the P stands for parent. So this is comprised of all the people that had a parental influence on us when we were kids. And they could be positive or negative, critical or nurturing. So all of those people, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, social workers, teachers, all of those people that had that parental influence on us make up our parent ego state. Now, this is a messaging system, and it's what we hear in our id. So, when I'm walking through my home with my four kids and wife, and everybody has a light on in every room, I sound just like my dad when I say, what do you think I made out of money? Because he could say that in our house. And I find myself doing the same thing, talking like my parents at times. Now, in this parent ego state, this is where we get our values. This is also where we learn how to be responsible. And I'm spelling this completely wrong on camera. Somebody look up responsible. Is it right? So this is where we learn to be responsible. And again, this is made up of all the people that had that parental influence on us. 
So when a person is using their parent ego state, you usually can tell when you hear someone using questions like, you should do this, you shouldn't do this, you ought to, don't, do, could, would. And they sound like a parent. So we parent ourselves the way we were parented. And we're usually using those words, and that's how you can tell when a person is in their parent ego state. They're usually being very parental of themselves or others. Now, with the adult ego state, this is what we call the executive secretary of the three. So the parent ego state is an ego state of the past, and the child ego state is an ego state of the past. But our adult ego state is what we call the executive secretary. It's an ego state of the present. It's constantly taking in present day information. So it doesn't matter whether you're three or whether you're 46. We all have a, an adult ego state. We're born with all three. And you can see that very easily if you've ever been around small children. You can see children being very parental. You can see children being very adult-like. And you can also see children being child-like. So in our adult ego state, this is where we learn to do all of our best thinking. This is where we make decisions. And this usually looks like if I was to ask you to give me directions to your favorite place to eat, how would you get there? Would you take a left on this road? Would you take a right on this road? How far down you would go this road? And then you would wave at the man at the tree, and then you would pass him, and then you would turn right, and bam, we're there. So the adult ego state thinks very linear and thinks in logical ways because it's where we learn to problem solve. Our adult ego state, let me say that again, our adult ego state is where we learn to problem solve. And also this is where we do our best thinking. It's who we are presently. Now, Dr. Byrne believed that the best of us resides in the child. And that any time anyone is going to do any type of deep change, the child has to be on board. So the child is that special part of us. It, it exists from about age 5 to 12, the same age range that the parent ego state began to form and exist, 5 to 12. And in our child ego state, this is where we get all of our feelings. So all those wonderful feelings, wonderful experiences from childhood, all those terrible feelings, all those terrible experiences from childhood, they all exist in the child ego state. And in that child ego state is where we learn how to navigate the world. Think about, this is how it works typically. This is, would be the example that I would use. Is when a, you can tell when a person's in the child ego state, it's because they usually want what they want when they want it. My wife and I were in Sam's Club many, many years ago, and they had these beach umbrellas on sale, and I thought it was a really good deal. And so I began to load up the grocery cart with two umbrellas. And my wife said to me, very matter of fact, Tim, we only have a certain amount of money. We cannot purchase the beach umbrellas. And I was like, but we need them. We're probably going to go to the beach this summer. We need the beach umbrellas. And I want them. And she looked at me and she said, Mr. Therapist, how old are you acting right now? And I said, five years old. And I don't appreciate your sarcasm, lady. That was free. I'm trying to be also a comedian one day. <laughs> so in order for change to occur, we have to get the child on. And again, I want you to remember, the child part of us is the best part. It's the best part of who we are. Now, when I begin to work with clients, one of the things that I like to tell people, in order to live a balanced life, we have to be responsible, we have to make good decisions, and we have to take good care of ourselves. So we have to be responsible, we have to make good decisions, and we have to take good care of ourselves. And I will repeat that over and over and over until that becomes a part of their 
process and, and how to be balanced, responsible, make good decisions, taking care of myself. Because that message, it appeases the parent inside, it makes sense to the adult, and it tickles the child. And that's how we live a balanced life. So just in this messaging system, I want you to think about what happens when two people come in contact with each other. This is why we call it transactional analysis, because transactions occur and we want to analyze it. So we've got these two individuals. This is Samuel and this is Tim. And Samuel has said to Tim, your voice sounds like the air condition. And Tim says back to Samuel, gee, thanks. And it's communicated child to child. A little funny. Now, let's look at, oh, wait a minute. Let me tell you something else. So this is what we call complementary transactions. And complementary transactions are where these vector lines are parallel. So they're going back and forth, and communication can continue. Sam, tell me how I sound now. You sound great. Sam, Samuel, Samuel, tell me what can I improve upon? And Samuel would say, you can lower your voice, right? So Samuel and I could talk for days, and complementary communication does exactly that. Hey, how's it going? Fine. Wonderful weather we're having. I know, it's great outside. And that's how people can pass the time. The next communication process is what we call closed transactions or crossed. Cross transactions stop communication. So this is an example of where I ask my lovely, beautiful Dr. Hunt wife, woman of my dreams, I say to her, honey, where are my socks? And she responds from her parent to my child and says, do I look like your mother? I have no idea. Find them yourself. And I usually walk away feeling like, wow, that was hurtful. I can't believe that happened. But this is what we call a cross transaction. And you can see where the vector lines cross. Cross transactions always stop communication. So complementary transactions continue communication. Cross transactions stop communication. So the reason why in transactional analysis you want to learn ego states is because the more we learn about ourselves, the more we can understand others, and also we can recognize what ego states they are using with us so that we can respond, transact accordingly. So if I have a client that comes in and I ask them, how's your day? And they respond, screw you, Tim, I won't talk. That lets me know that I'm going to continue to respond out of my adult, hoping that I can get them to move from out of their parent and respond to me in their adult, so that we can begin to have more complementary transactions. Or, I'll just point that out, you seem very critical today, what's going on? Think about places at work or in school or in class, coming into contact with friends, faculty, staff. Think about how this, just this piece to this Tim Talk can be beneficial and helpful. I want you to think about that. Now, in the next segment coming up, we're going to talk about how suicide looks in this world of ego states and transactional analysis. See you next time.